The following satellite transmission, copyrighted by the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, is available for live broadcast in 10 seconds or for taping and rebroadcast by any AM, FM, shortwave, cable, or video outlet globally. This is a WBN Worldwide Broadcasting Network production. This is Vern Benham Grimsley with the Spiritual Renaissance Broadcast. There exists within your mind a fragment of infinity, a spark of spirit, the very living presence of the living God. God is not distant and removed from you and your problems, your decisions, aspirations, and anxieties. The kingdom of God is within you and a working part of your life and your thinking. A wonderful friend who lives just down the road from the ranch is a worker in wood, a spiritual teacher, and a published poet. He brought a marvelous gift, a beautiful clock made of a huge burl of cottonwood tree. It's one of the largest burl wood wall clocks I've ever seen, some three feet wide and over 12 inches from top to bottom. Mounted into the beautiful elliptical grain of the wood are brass Roman numerals which display the time. And in the back, there is an indentation cut in the wood where the electrical drive mechanism is fastened with a single pen light battery providing the energy to activate this clock. But that doesn't make it a clock. A battery-driven motor spinning aimlessly without any relation to the rotation of the earth and the passage of 24 hours in each calendar day would be useless. The brass hands would point randomly to one number and then the next, but would bear no relevance to the time of day. What makes that motor a clock, instead of just a motor with hands, is the quartz crystal regulator mechanism, which assures that precise time is being kept day after day after day. And so it is with your human mind. Your physical brain is an electrochemical mechanism. Just as a pen light battery is an electrochemical device which releases voltage, so does your brain release scientifically measurable electrical voltages. But none of it makes sense without the internal regulator. Within your mind, there is likewise a spiritual regulator, a mechanism which makes spiritual truth make sense to you. Just as a clock without a time regulator would make no sense, your mind without a spiritual regulating mechanism would not make sense out of spiritual truth. God has given a portion of his spirit to indwell your mind, to make spiritual truth make sense to you. It is by virtue of this indwelling fragment of God's literal presence that such admonitions as do to others as you would have them do to you have power and impact in your thinking. The love of God and others, the two great commandments of Christ, likewise are statements vitally alive with spiritual meaning because of this internal spiritual mechanism in your mind, which, if you will let it, can keep your thinking in synchrony with cosmic truths of the universe, just as an accurate clock ticks in synchrony with the stars. You can live and function in your life with your thinking harmonized with the very mind of God, if you will have it so. This is the meaning of that portion of the Lord's Prayer which goes, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. As it is in heaven. Your earthly material mind can function in harmony with the mind which created the planets and the galaxies of this universe, your day-by-day -day thinking can be so attuned to the thinking of God that your life will become an expression of the thinking of God. You will live with a new perception of truth and beauty and goodness, a deeper love for God, for others, for life itself. You will know the peace and the joy of regulating your thinking and your life by the meter and the rhythms of the eternal purpose of the source and controller of all reality. You will begin to know why you're alive, what your real purpose is, and how living can become exuberant and ebullient for you. God loves you. And if you will simply ask God by the power of his indwelling spirit to regulate your mind and your thinking, your perceptions of the meanings and values of your human existence will become far more profound. The daily prayer to do the will of God is at the very heart of this. 
But God will thus regulate your thinking in accordance with God's higher thinking if and only if you desire that every day. If you choose to wander off into byways of selfishness, hatred, cruelty, and oppression, that is your decision. But always does your Heavenly Father await your return to the higher and better ways of thinking, feeling, acting, and reacting. God loves you. God wants only good for your life. That is the meaning of the will of God. When you seek for the will of God for your life and your experience, you are seeking the greatest possible, plenteous, and bountiful good which is conceivable in all the universe because that is the will of God. God's will is unqualifiedly, without exception, without footnotes or asterisks, it is good. 100% in totality, it is good. And when you seek the will of God, you are seeking the greatest amount of good for your life and the greatest amount of good for the greatest number for the greatest length of time. It is the greatest conceivable, definable, understandable concept of good, the will of God. When you say in your praying, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, when you say that to God, you are aligning and synchronizing your mind, your thinking, your will with the mind, the thinking, the will of God, which is the greatest possible good for your life and your experience and the life and the experience of those around you. And for the world itself, you strike a chord of harmony with the very universe when you seek the will of God. God desires that you find and know the genuine joys of life. Living as a child of God and a brother or sister to every other person upon this planet, living in compassion, understanding, and the serenity of spirit, which comes from knowing God as your father and your friend, for the very mind that regulates the stars can regulate your thinking. If you will have it so in living faith, said Jesus, these four incredibly powerful words, have faith in God. Trust God with all your heart. Trust God. Give your life to the God who gave you your life in the first place. And all things beginning this very moment will become as new to you. This is the ultimate answer. The answer to most human problems on this planet is spiritual. Because most of the human problems on this planet are, in and of themselves, spiritual problems. Certainly there are many material difficulties on this earth. Typhoons, tornadoes, earthquakes, forest fires, floods. But by far the most serious problems are spiritual problems. Warfare, murder, cruelty, hatred, and revenge. These phenomena wreak far more havoc on this world than the avalanches, storms, landslides, disease, and other natural disasters. We can live with the weather and the earthquakes. It's the people who are the problems. We can design fortified buildings and living structures capable of withstanding everything from tremors to typhoons. What humanity needs most are spiritual fortifications of the soul to withstand deliberate hatred, betrayal, and cruelty from human beings. And most urgently, humanity needs to find the source of abiding, genuine spiritual power, the living God, the loving Father and friend of each and all of humankind, who created us to live in love and forgiveness, to live in care and compassion, and concern. That's how you were born and designed to live your life in faith and hope and love. God loves you. And God can and will assist you in the learning of love and mercy in your life. It is the only solution. It is that for which you were created. You will never be truly happy in the living of your life or the dying of your death without God. Without the experience of God, not just finding out about God theologically, but finding God experientially, not just knowing about God abstractly, but knowing God personally in your day-by-day, moment-by-moment existence. Your greatest problems are spiritual and your greatest answers 
are spiritual. If you haven't found God, you need to find God now. And if you have found God, you need to deepen your relationship with God. God must become your very best friend, your continual companion, with whom you have an ever-increasing conscious contact, living with a vital daily companionship with God through the days and decades of your life. That is really living. Said Jesus, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. And then death itself will be but the planting of the seed of life everlasting. A seed planted in the earth must perish in giving life to the plant. The seed is consumed that the new sprout may live. And so one day must your body be consumed that your soul may take its flight. Your physical self must perish that your spiritual self may be liberated. So may you live your life, fearless of life and fearless of death, and certain of these spiritual things, full of the joyous, enthusiastic, hopeful, and faith-filled love of God and humankind. For this you were born and created to live. And this you can discover beginning right here, right now, this very moment. For free literature on the spiritual life, write to us at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Post Office Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, USA. I've written Finding God, Getting to Know God, Growing Spiritually, Seven Principles of Prayer, The Fatherhood of God, The Brotherhood of Man, any and all of this literature, yours with no cost, charge, or obligation, when you write to us at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Post Office Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, USA. This is a non-sectarian, non-profit program proclaiming the dawning spiritual renaissance, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, the worldwide family of God. And for those of you listening in other countries around the world, over our international satellite and shortwave network, let me spell the mailing address. Post Office Box 3080, Oakhurst, O-A-K-H-U-R-S-T, California, C-A-L-I-F-O-R-N-I-A 93644, United States of America. Again, no cost, no charge, no obligation. And so for now, this is Vern Benham Grimsley saying, May God's will be done by you. Good day.